Indigo Avenue and the Kensington Bigfoot, a radio play written by Karen Flint, story by Lakshmi Varma, Katrina Zawaski, Noah Williams, and Karen Flint. Beyond the daily hustle and bustle of Portobello Market, in a cramped office above Dr. Fiddlestick's seldom open curio shop, Indigo Avonmore, London's finest private detectorist, is facing the greatest test of his story career. Come here, you little! Damn fly, I'll teach you to mock me. Ah, go away, I'm very, very busy. Very well, you win this round, Mr. Fly. Andre! Inigo, I need your help. What was that, young lady? Inigo, I need your help. One more time? Inigo, I need your help. Still not. Inigo, I need your help. Well, why didn't you say so? Please take a seat. Now, first things first. Do you have any money? Excuse me? Money, my dear. The services of London's finest private detectorists do not come cheap. Mr. Avril, my name is Amelia Ozil and I can assure you that money will not banish you. Ozil, as in the Ozil Hosley Incorporated, the Hoosley Profitable Sock Merchants owned by the reclusive yet ludicrously wealthy Ozil sisters. The very same. I'm rich. What was that? I said I'm really looking forward to helping you. Thank heavens. It's my sister, you see? She's missing. Good gods! And how long has the poor lamb been lost? 97 minutes. Miss Ozil, forgive my impertinence, but 97 minutes is hardly long enough for someone to be missing. Late, perhaps. Possibly even fashionably. But not... You don't understand! I woke up this morning and she was gone. We were very close, you see. Always have been. We share the same bedroom, the same clothes, the same toothbrush. At least it's never far from my side. Except for the short constitutional she takes through Kensington Gardens before bedtime. She's a terrible snorer, you see. And the doctor said fresh air cleans the sinuses. But now, I'll do anything to her snuffle in her sleep for last. There, there, Miss Moneybags. I mean, (laughs) also, Indigo Avonmore is on the case. Now, do you have a description of the missing girl? Oh, that's easy, Mr. Avonmore. Elisa looks just like me. We're identical twins. As night falls, Indigo Avonmore races to the scene of the crime, braving the fog-shrouded precincts of Kensington Gardens as he retraces the steps of his elusive quarry. Now, if I were the heir to England's greatest sock fortune, where would I be? (laughs) What's this? Emerging from the Mr. Head. Some kind of multi-headed Cerberus. Look at those beady eyes, those wagging tails. It's... It's... Evening, Master Avonmore. I warn you, Benson. If I get a speck of slobber on me, I'll neuter the culprit with a teaspoon. You're not a dog person, are you, Indigo? I was referring to your slobber, Benson, not your four-legged friends. Who's a good boy, then? I think I have a biscuit here somewhere. How goes the life of the royal dog walker? I trust Her Majesty's prized Pomeranians are in fine health? Well, little Albert the Sixth has had a terrible cold, and Henry the Third keeps wheeling on the tapestries. Then William the Sixth did a poo on the... Fascinating stuff, old chap. Now, Benson, you always take the pups for their walkies here at this time, correct? Right, you are, sir. By any chance, have you seen a young lady? She comes here frequently at this hour. Oh, you mean Elisa Othil? I see her all the time. A very pleasant girl. 
always come with a spare pair of socks for a needy soul. Hmm, spare socks, you say? That's right. The little lot thief don't have go through my socks. Pomeranians love a good chew, they do. And when and where did you see Eliza last? The other night, over there behind the ornamental fabric. Come, I'll show you. See, there's her footprints in the mud. But what are these other footprints? Good gods, they're enormous. That foot is very big indeed, sir. So then, my Lisbon lieutenant, it seems I'm on the hunt for a Kensington Bigfoot. Dun dun dun. As night gives way to day, Indigo returns to the quiet confines of his office, there to reflect on the case in his sanctum of Sanctorum. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, but what does it mean? Andre! They sent a ransom note! Oh, not this again! Please sit down, Amelia, and proceed at a much more audible pace. And no, ransom! Hey, look! Deliver half the Ozil fortune in precious jewels to the abandoned warehouse behind the... Crikey! I trust you have the ransom. Right here. Half of her in diamonds, emeralds and rubies. Though, I must admit, I'm terrified to deliver them myself. And why should you? Not when you have Indigo Avonmore at your service. I'll just take those lovely, lovely jewels for you, shall I? With little thought for his own safety, though some for his humble bank balance, Indigo bravely ventures forth to meet the infamous Bigfoot Kidnapper. Hello, hello, hello. Is anyone here in this conveniently abandoned warehouse? Above, Detectorist, set the bag of jewels down and leave. Ah, then you know who I am, Mr. Bigfoot. I know you're about to detect a bullet if you don't hide of the ransom. Come now. Can it really be called a ransom if you're giving it to his rightful owner? What? How did you... Deduce your identity? A simple act of detection. One I'd be happy to explain. But first, take off that hood. Eliza Ozil. Dun dun dun! Heavens. However did you guess? While you are dealing with London's finest private detectorist, I could tell it was you in your voice. You clearly faked your own kidnapping to get away from your sister. Did she tell you about the toothbrush? She did. Clearly a sign of a troubled mind. It's not as if we can't afford more than one, but she's ever so clingy, even for a twin. Sometimes I just need a moment by myself to breathe. (sighs) But surely that wasn't enough evidence against me. No. The case really came together when I encountered Benson, the royal dog walker, who informed me of your propensity for carrying extra pair of socks. Hardly a crime for a sock manufacturer. But someone with access to huge quantities of socks could conveniently conceal themselves behind an ornamental shrubbery, slip on multiple pairs, then sneak off, leaving a completely different set of tracks in the mud, thus making it appear as if they been ambushed by a big-footed individual. Genius! But please, Mr. Avonmore, you can't tell my sister. She can't know I fake my own kidnapping just to get away from her. It would break her heart. It's certainly a thorny problem. One I think we can resolve with a simple act of generosity. I should give back the ransom then. Don't be a silly girl. You should split it with me whilst I'll tell your sister the Bigfoot double-crossed us. Oh, Mr. Avonmore, truly, you're London's greatest detectorist. And so ends yet another exciting entry in the curious casebook of Indigo Avonmore, Private Detective.